This is section 5.5 part 2, so we're going to move on with solving trig equations. The first section we did uh, some real basic algebra, talking a lot about like two-step equations, things like that. Today we're going to do part 2, which is going to still involve algebra. We are still not going to get into the identities until part 3. Uh, we're just going to get into a little bit more complex algebra. So what we want to do is just real briefly uh, remind uh, how this works here with the sine, cosine, and tangent making sure that we understand that the sine is positive on the top and negative on the bottom, cosine is positive on the right and negative on the left, and then our tangent, which is kind of behind this picture right here, is positive in the top right and positive in the bottom left, and then negative on the top left and negative in the bottom right. So that is going to be important, and of course we had our uh, where we use all students take calculus to help us remember that. Okay, so let's just get right into solving these equations again. So what we're going to talk about here is we're discussing how to solve, but now we're going to talk about if we cannot combine onto one side of the equation, in other words, if we can't eliminate something or if we can't isolate one specific trig function, then we might want to try factoring and applying the zero product property. So you'll kind of see what that is. You should know what the zero product property is, and you should know what factoring is. Factoring is a major, major issue with a lot of you, and we need to make sure that we can identify when factoring is appropriate. So in this case right here, we have cosine of x times sine of x equals 3 cosine of x. So naturally, what you should be thinking about is, well, we, we clearly can't, we don't have the same trig function, so we need to figure out how to, uh, how to at least separate our trig functions to maybe be able to solve. So in this case, what we're going to want to do is, I have a cosine on this term and I have a cosine on this term, so what we can do is, why don't we first move the cosine, uh, 3 cosine of x over to the other side, so we subtract it from both sides and we end up getting cosine of x, sine of x, minus... 3 cosine of x equals 0. Because what happens is, is we now have something equal to 0, and we also have a cosine on both terms. So now what we can do is we can factor out a cosine. Let me fix this here for a second. We're just going to go down a little bit. All right, so we're going to factor out a cosine of x off of both terms. So we're left with cosine of x on the outside and sine of x minus 3 on the inside. And here's the part that I think a lot of you really, really struggle with. This is called the zero product property, meaning that it, if any of these sets of terms, meaning the parentheses or the cosine of x, if either of them are equal to zero, then the whole thing is equal to zero. So what we do is we set up two separate equations. Cosine of x equals 0 and sine of x minus 3 equals 0. Because if this is equal to 0, the whole thing is equal to 0. If this is equal to 0, then the whole thing is equal to 0. And so we're just going to solve each one of these. We're going to do the one on the right first. So this is sine of x equals 3. Well, hopefully you realize that sine of x has to be in between negative 1 and positive 1. So we, we know that our that sine's range is always between negative 1 and positive 1. So this one right here yields no solutions. And then this one over here, cosine is 0. And I know that we still struggle with this, but where is cosine equal to 0 at? Well, this is obviously not going to be a special right triangle, so we instead need to look at our axes and recall that our coordinates are 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1, and that the cosine is our x value, so we look at where our x value is equal to 0, which is at 90 degrees and 270. So our x value here is 90 degrees, and 270 degrees, and if we write that in radians, that is pi halves and 3 pi halves. So these are the two solutions for this one. And remember, the answers don't always have to be in both degrees and radians. I'm just showing you what they would be in both degrees and radians. Sometimes the problem will basically tell you what it wants it in. Okay, so that's the first one. That's a basic factoring one. 
Okay, that's a factoring. That's that's considered a factoring one where there's a common factor on all terms, and you can set up the zero product property like that. So getting into the next problem, same basic idea. Okay, so same basic idea, but but we're going to have a little bit different thing on the inside of the parentheses here. So again, we have a cosine on the right. We have a sine on the, or we have a sine and a cosine on the left. So let's first bring our negative square root of two cosine of x to both sides. So we are left with two sine of x, cosine of x minus square root of two cosine of x equals zero again because we subtracted everything from the right-hand side. Once again, we have cosine of x is our common factor. So we are left with two sine of x minus square root of two. So once again, we set up our zero product property. We get cosine of x equals zero. We get two sine of x minus square root of two equals zero. And then we go through and solve. We already solved this on the last one. So solving this on the last one, we already know that x is going to be equal to 90 degrees and 270 degrees or x equals pi halves and 3 pi over 2. So we already know that those are two of our solutions. But we now still have to solve this over here. So this is going to be 2 sine of x equals square root of 2. We're just adding square root of 2 to both sides. Then we divide both sides by 2, and we get the sine of x equals the square root of 2 over 2. So with the sine of x equaling square root of 2 over 2, here's where we figure out which quadrants we're working in. Sine is positive in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. Label our side square root of 2, 2, square root of 2, 2. And that means that our angle here, based on this special right triangle, has to be 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. So therefore, our x is 45 degrees. And then over here, if we figure out what it gets to, until we get to this 45 degrees, that would be 135 degrees. We do that by doing 180 minus 45. So in radians, that's equal to pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. And remember, if you're going to convert it to radians, then it's just multiplying, you know, 45 times pi over 180 and 135 times pi over 180 would get your pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Okay, so again, when you are, when you're factoring these, it's a common factor. You're solving each individual equation because they can both be equal to zero uh, separately, and then you get your solution. So we had four solutions in this one, depending on whether it's in uh, degrees or radians. So if it, was, if it was in degrees, you'd have 90, 270, 45, and 135. If it was in radians, it would just be pi halves, 3 pi halves, pi over 4, and 3 pi over 4. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next one is a little bit of a different problem because now we're dealing with something to the fourth power and a squared in between and a minus 2. There is no common factor among these three. So instead, on this one, what we need to look to do is we need to look to factor in a binomial format. So, and I know that factoring is something that maybe you still struggle with, but let's see where we get here. So remember, when we factor, we always look at the first term and the last term to kind of set this up. So as soon as I see cosine to the fourth power of x, I pretty much know that my first two terms are going to be cosine squared of x, because I know cosine squared times cosine squared is cosine to the fourth. Now at the end, we know that we're, we have to multiply to be minus 2, well, if we think about the middle term, the middle term has to be a positive 1 cosine squared of x. So that means that I need to have more positives than I have negatives. So that means I would put my plus 2 here, and I'll put my minus 1 here. In other words, I know that it doesn't matter where the plus 2 and the minus 1 go. It just needs to be a plus 2 and a minus 1. Because cosine squared times 2 is 2 cosine squared of x. Negative 1 times cosine of squared of x is minus 1 cosine squared of x, and if you combine those, you get your positive cosine squared of x, which is what we want for our middle term. So remember, when you're factoring, just think about the first term and the last term, and then just try a few things out, foil it to make sure it works out. So now we have two functions here. We have cosine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. Same thing. This is the zero product property. 
cosine squared of x plus 2 equals 0. So now we go through and solve each one of these equations. So we have cosine squared of x equals 1. Then we take the square root of both sides. And please, please, please do not forget that when we take the square root of both sides, it has to be plus or minus the square root of 1, which is just 1. Over here, we would have the cosine squared of x equals negative 2. And the cosine of x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. This is not going to yield us any solutions. So this one, we get no solutions. We can't take the square root of a negative number. But with cosine of x equaling positive or negative 1, if we draw out our coordinate plane again, we have all of our major points. We remember that the cosine is the x value. Cosine is the x value. And the x value is 1 or negative 1 at this point right here and this point right here. So we can say that x is equal to 0 degrees. 180 degrees and we will also include when we get around the circle again at 360 degrees and then of course in radians that would be 0 pi and 2 pi so those are our only solutions here so you had three solutions mainly because we start at 0 and we end at 360 or end at or start at 0 and end at 2 pi so we will include the beginning and the end point there so that is an example where you have to factor into binomials okay in this last one is the same sort of question. We have 2 sine squared of x plus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. So once again, when, when you see that, there's no common factor there, so we have to factor this into binomials. And because I see this 2 sine squared of x, I know that one of my terms is going to be 2 sine of x, and the other one is just going to be sine of x. And we have a negative 1 at the end, so we've just got to decide where the negative 1 goes and where the positive 1 goes. Because that's the only way to get negative 1 is from uh, multiplying negative 1 times positive 1. So again, we have a positive 1 in the middle. So therefore, I want this 2 to be multiplied by a positive 1. That will give me 2 sine of x. And then the 2 sine of x and the negative 1 sine of x will become positive 1 sine of x. So again, this is just you trialing and erroring, and erroring it through to make sure you get your correct factors. So now we have 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Sine of x plus 1 equals 0. 2 sine of x equals negative 1. Sine of x equals negative 1 half. Okay, this one right here, we, get, we subtract 1 from both sides. We get sine of x equals negative 1. So solving this one, we... Think about where is sine of x equal to negative 1. Well, again, we are going to be on our major axes here. So in this case, negative 1, that's a y value. y is equal to negative 1 at this point down here. So that means x is equal to 270 degrees, or x equals 3 pi over 2. So there's one solution for us. And then the sine is equal to negative 1 half. Or sorry, that's not negative 1 half, that's positive 1 half. You guys are probably confused. Hopefully you still paid attention to the rest of it instead of thinking that. That's positive one-half because we added one to both sides. So sine is positive in the first quadrant. and the second quadrant, we put our 1 on the opposite side and our 2 on the hypotenuse. That's going to yield a 30-degree angle at both spots. So our first answer is 30 degrees. Our second answer is 180 minus 30 which is 150 degrees, which gives us pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Every problem will be like this. So it's you are either going to be factoring out a common factor and then using the zero product prop property, or you will be fa uh, factoring into binomials and using the zero product property. So um, they're all usually going to be really, really basic factoring. It shouldn't be anything really complex or really complicated. So uh, I hope this makes sense. Uh, you will work on this in class, obviously, and I hope you have a good night.